Hi, and welcome to Lab 16, where we learn about blood typing. Now, blood typing is really important if you happen to be donating blood, and even more important if you happen to be the recipient of a blood transfusion. And that is because if you happen to be receiving somebody else's blood that is showing you new types of antigens, then you can have what is known as a transfusion reaction, and it could be fatal. So therefore, making sure that we match blood donors correctly with recipient is literally a life or death matter. So let's go ahead and get started. You may have heard of blood types such as O positive, O negative, A positive, AB negative, etc. And many of you may already know what your blood type is. Those blood types reflect the presence or absence of specific molecules on the surface of red blood cells that could be antigenic. So let's take a look. In this image here, we have four red blood cells each displaying different potential antigens, or we'll call them tags, on the surface. So we have an A tag, we have one that has nothing on it, we have an A and a B tag, we have positive tags. So what do those represent? Well, it turns out that there are actually two different genes that code for these potential antigens. One gene is called ABO, and the other gene is called the rhesus factor, or RH. So, so let's watch a quick video on how to determine blood type. In this video, I draw four red blood cells for you with a variety of potential antigens or tags on the surface. We're going to break it down first by looking at the ABO gene. If there is an A tag, I'll write A. If there is a B tag, I will write B. And if there is no A or B, then the type is considered to be O. For the RH antigen, you either have a plus, that's the RH positive, or you do not, in which case you are considered to be negative. Your blood type is a combination of both the ABO characteristics and the RH characteristics of your blood. So for instance, I am O positive. So I do not have an A tag, I do not have a B tag, but I do have the RH positive antigen. So I am considered O positive, which is actually the most common blood type out there. Right, now that we've learned how to identify blood types, let's take a look at some genetics problems. Hopefully you've already explored this in a general biology class, but in case you haven't, there are three alleles in the human population for the ABO gene. They are the A allele codes for the A antigen, the B allele codes for the B antigen, and the little i allele codes for no antigen. So remember that you get two copies of alleles at each gene. So your genotype would be some combination of those three potential alleles. So in this next video, I'm going to show you an example. Consider the following five blood types. Let's take a look at the potential genotypes of each one. When we look at the ABO gene, for O type blood, there is only little i, little i. That's the only way that you can be O type blood. If you are A type blood, then you must have at least one A allele. Now, your second allele could also be an A, or it could be a little i, which codes for nothing. If you are AB type, then you must have an A and a B allele. Again, if you're O type, you have two little i's. Those code for neither A or B, just a nothing. And then if you're B type, you must have at least one copy of B, but then your other copies can be a little i or another B. For the RH factor, it's a similar strategy. If you have at least one copy of RH positive, then you make that positive antigen and you are considered to be positive type blood. So if you have a positive type blood, O positive, A positive, AB positive, B positive, then you have at least one copy of RH positive. 
Now your other allele could be a negative or it could be another positive. Now that we've refreshed our alleles, which hopefully is review from general biology, let's take a quick detour into the realm of genetics. So blood typing lends itself to classic Mendelian genetics. So I'm going to use one of the examples that was in the lab, and hopefully it's enough that you'll be able to figure out the other examples. If I have two individuals, mom is type AB blood and dad is type O blood, what are the potential genotypes and blood types of their children? So we're going to ignore the rhesus factor in this problem. Just look at the ABO gene. So if you're type AB blood, then you must have the A and the B alleles. If you're type O, then you must have two little I's. So you simply plug those into a Punnett square. If you recall the Punnett square, you're going to place the parental genotypes outside the square and then deposit those alleles inside their various squares to come up with the predicted genotypes. So here it's pretty evident that there are only two genotypes, an A and an I and a B and an I or type A and type B blood respectively. So if you have two parents, one is AB and the other is O, their children will either be A or B. Those are the only possibilities. Now you might wanna pause the video and try your hand at the other genetics problems. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the procedure in today's lab. If we were to do this lab in person, you would have the opportunity to bleed and determine your own blood type. So how does this work? Well, the way we determine blood type is by combining your blood with various antibodies. There are three types of antibodies. We have anti-A. Anti-A antibody will bind to the A antigen. Anti-B antibody will bind to the B antigen, and anti-RH will bind to the RH positive antigen. And so what we do is we drop your blood into this cute little plastic tray that has three wells in it. You can see that the wells are lightly embossed with A, B, and RH. So once we do that, then we add our various anti -sera. So anti is just a collection of antibodies for some antigen. So to the A well, we add anti-A. To the B well, we add anti-B. And to the RH well, we add anti-RH. And then we mix up the blood with the various antibodies. Well, what are we looking for? We're looking for something called an agglutination reaction. Let's use this example to demonstrate agglutination. I have here a bunch of A negative blood. So only the A antigen is present. What that means if I mix this blood with anti-A or antibodies that specifically bind to A antigens, then I'm going to get an agglutination reaction. Here's what this looks like. The antibodies initially form into these rosettes or these aggregations. It almost looks like a bouquet of flowers where the stems of the antibodies come together, leaving the binding spots exposed. But then those binding spots are going to attract their antigen, which in this case is the A. But the antigen doesn't come by itself. It pulls the entire red blood cell with it. So what happens is, is that when the A antigen is mixed with anti-A, red blood cells end up aggregating together into these clumps. Now I say clumps, but from our naked eye, it looks like little flecks. So that's the agglutination reaction that we're looking for. And if you do get a positive agglutination reaction, then what that tells us is that in fact, you do have that antigen present on your blood. So let's use some real examples. Agglutination reactions take about five minutes, and we're gonna take a close up of what's happened to the blood in each of the wells when the blood gets mixed with its anti -sera. And what we're looking for are some sort of clumps. I think it's pretty obvious that the RH tray is showing agglutination or clumping. 
Now, it turns out that the A tray is also showing agglutination in the sample, but it's a little harder to see. You almost have to pull out the blood a little bit, and then you can see that the blood clumps up. When we turn to the B well, it looks like the B is actually going to show agglutination, but when I mix it up again, and then I kind of drag that blood down, you can see that it's still more homogenous. So the blood is not rushing back together in these clumps like it did with the A or the RH. So in this blood sample, the A is showing an agglutination reaction, the RH is showing an, an agglutination reaction, while the B does not show an agglutination reaction. So this person's blood type is A positive. Let's take a look at the next example. Now in this blood sample, I think the RH shows a pretty strong agglutination reaction again. And now we're gonna take a look at A. And the A, which is separated out into two piles of blood, also shows agglutination, maybe even a little more strongly than the first sample did. You can see that pretty clearly in the upper margin where the blood has clearly separated from the fluid, which is kind of a blue. So the fact that the blood is separated from the solution, like oil separates from vinegar, indicates that we have some agglutination. So let's come down and take a look at the B. Now on first glance, this does not look like agglutination. But when I start picking at it with my toothpick and drawing it out, you can see that in fact, the blood does want to clump back together in a way that it didn't in the first sample. All right, in our last blood sample, let's take a look at it. This one is actually mine. I already told you what my blood type is. So let's see if you can match my blood type with what you see in this video. It's a bummer that we were not able to see more samples, but we did show you three. And now what we're going to do is take a look at some of the post lab questions. So now that we've finished the actual lab experiment, let's take a look at some of the post lab questions, starting with how to determine who potential donors and recipients are for various blood types. So I'm going to show you five different blood types. And right away, you should recognize what blood types they are based on the antigens that are shown on the red blood cells. So from left to right, we have A negative, B positive, O positive, AB negative. And on the far right, there are no antigens presented, so that is O negative. So what is the strategy for determining who could receive a blood type or if you have a particular blood type, who could you donate it to? But the strategy that you want to start with is to identify what antigens are present or being displayed on each red blood cell type. So from left to right, I have the A antigen, both the B and the RH positive antigen, just the RH positive, A and B, and then for O negative, there are no antigens. So I'm going to walk you through the A negative and the B positive, and then let you guys try the other three on your own. So the first question is, if, I, if I'm A negative, who could I receive blood from? Or if I'm B positive, who could I receive blood from? So to answer this question, it's helpful to make a list of all of the potential blood types. 
And then the rule that you want to apply is this. If I'm A negative, then the only antigen that I make is A. And so as long as you're not showing me the other two antigens, B or RH positive, I should be fine. So in other words, I, as an A negative person, cannot see B or RH positive. So let's go through the list and see which ones have a B or an RH positive or both. So O negative would be fine because it's not showing me anything. O positive, I can't accept because it shows me the RH positive antigen, which I don't make as an A negative person. I obviously could accept A negative blood, but I could not accept A positive blood for a similar reason. It shows me the positive antigen. I could not accept any type of B blood because it shows me a new antigen, which is B. For the same reason, I cannot accept AB blood because although I make A, I do not make B and therefore I cannot see B. So I can't accept any blood that has a B in it. So the only two blood types that I could receive blood from are O negative and A negative. So let's apply the same strategy and look at the B positive blood. Who could donate to B positive? So once again, a B positive person makes two antigens, the B and the RH positive. So the only antigen that's not on that list is A. So basically, B positive should be able to accept any blood that doesn't have A in it. So it should accept O negative, O positive, but not A negative because that would be showing the B positive person a new antigen in A, nor could the B positive person take A positive blood because again, they would be seeing a new antigen, A. They would be able to accept B negative and B positive, but not AB negative or AB positive, again, because those blood types contain the A antigen. So now we have our list. Okay, what about donating? What types of people can I donate to? Well, let's look at A negative. And again, we're going to assume that I'm A negative. Not really, I'm O positive, but let's assume for a moment. Let's assume for a moment that I'm A negative. Who could I donate to? In the same fashion, whoever receives my blood must also make the same antigens that I do. In other words, they can't see anything new. So I make the A antigen only, so whoever gets my blood must also make the A antigen. Now they can make other things too, but they at least have to have A. So right away, O negative and O positive are out of the question because they don't make the A antigen. However, a negative and a positive could both receive my blood because those individuals do make the A antigen. B negative and B positive cannot receive my blood because they don't make A. But AB negative and AB positive can because again, they make the A antigen. So this is my list. Let's apply that same strategy to the B positive side. So once again, if I'm B positive, I make both B and positive. So whoever receives my blood must also make both B and RH positive. You cannot cherry pick here. Whoever receives the blood has to make both. So basically we're looking for people who have both B and positive somewhere in their blood. So I've encountered my first example, which is B positive, and then AB positive as well. So again, both B and positive must be present in order for this person to receive B positive blood. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and give you an opportunity to try this on your own. So please pause the video and try to complete this part of the problem. 
So the last thing to talk about is urethroblastosis fatalis, which is a disorder involving the RH antigen. Urethroblastosis fatalis it can result in uh, horrific miscarriages, often late term or uh, severe birth defects. And it occurs when you have an RH positive fetus inside an RH negative mother. So the mother is RH negative. So she could be O negative, A negative, B negative, AB negative, but the fetus is positive. Now this is possible because dad's sperm could have had a positive allele with it. So the first time an RH negative mother carries an RH positive fetus, nothing really happens because the fetal blood and the maternal blood are kept pretty separate. But there is a period of mixing, and that period would be birth, a late miscarriage, or a late abortion, where there's some mixing of the fetal and the maternal blood. And so when that mixing occurs, mom suddenly gets exposed to a, a batch of fetal blood, and that includes the Rh positive antigen. So an immune response commences, and within a couple weeks, mom has developed antibodies to Rh positive. So let's say that mom gets pregnant again, and the second baby is also Rh positive. But now mom has Rh positive antibodies running around her blood, and some of those are able to cross over into the fetal circulation and bind to the positive antigens that are on baby's blood. So when red blood cells get coated in antibodies, that triggers their destruction. So the red blood cells are destroyed and it can result in severe birth defects because the baby is not reliably delivering oxygen to growing organs and often results in miscarriage. So if you are an RH negative mother, then you will be given Rogam um, during the period where they think that that fetal blood will be mixed with your blood <clears throat> to prevent the development of antibodies. So again, the goal of Rogam is to prevent mom from actually seeing the RH positive antigen and developing her own antibodies to it so that future pregnancies will be safe. All right, that concludes our discussion of Lab 16. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sorry we didn't get to do it in person. Thanks.